everyone, Dan here from On One. Today I wanted to get a little technical with you guys and talk about the different ways that you can sharpen in On One Photo, why you would use them, and when you would use them. First off, let's talk about the different types of sharpening. I'm going to add a sharpening pane. Now, whenever you adjust your sharpening or you want to judge your sharpening, you want to make sure you're doing it at 100% or 1 to 1. So I'm just going to click on 100 here in the navigator and make sure that I'm viewing it at that 100% setting. That way I can really see what the effect is. Now let's talk about the different types. You notice there's a type pop-up and there's three different types. There's high pass, progressive, and unsharp mask. Let's start with unsharp mask. That's kind of the granddaddy of sharpening. If you're an old Photoshop user like me, you're used to using the unsharp mask. The way an unsharp mask works is it actually looks for every pixel in the photo. It looks at the neighborhood around it and says, how can I make this pixel different from my neighbors? and that will visually make things sharper. And the way that it works is there's a halo slider that lets me decide how many pixels away from the pixel I'm adjusting I want to look at to figure out how to make it different. The amount is how different I'm going to make it. And then the threshold is how different the neighboring pixels need to be before I actually apply the sharpening. Now that's a lot to wrap your brain around, but a lot of times it's easier to visually explain it. So I'll show you a great trick so you can see what's happening to your photos when you adjust the sharpening. Click on the Blending Options gear right up here, go to the Blending Mode, and change it to Difference. Now, your photo is going to go black here for a second. Don't worry, we're going to bring back so you can see what it looks like. This is really only for analyzing the changes. It's not something you'd actually apply to your photo. Then come back, and you can grab your amount slider. I'm going to turn it up pretty high for this illustration to make it easier for you to see. And I'm going to bring the threshold all the way down. Now, as I adjust the halo, this is looking at how big of a edge difference before I'm going to start to amplify it. And you can see that it creates kind of a color skeleton of the image of all of the edges. And it's a fairly binary, kind of an on or off mask. There's not a lot of, of, uh, of graduation or feather in this mask. As I adjust the halo, that is going to get stronger and you'll see how I get larger color differences. Threshold, as I increase it, is going to uh, decrease the overall sharpening look by taking the things that are close together and not sharpening them. So as I start to bring this up, it will reduce the sharpening of what you think of as the noise. So it really leaves the sharpening just on the edges. Let's take a look at what this looks like back in a normal blending mode. All right, so this is a very strong setting for all of these guys. I'm going to bring these down and we'll talk about typical settings you would use. Most of the time when you use unsharp mask, it's for what we think of as final sharpening before we're going to go to print. Now there's a lot of great sharpening presets in resize and that's where I would do my final uh, sharpening because it already has the settings built in for the different paper and printer types. But let me walk you through some of those settings so you can understand what they do. Typically for a print, I want to use a halo of about one and a half to two for a glossy paper. If it's a matte paper, I would probably go up higher to maybe two or two and a half. The amount is really going to be determined by what you need in your photo for the amount of sharpness. A lot of the times that's going to be around 150 is a good starting point. And then you can dial that up or down based on your taste. And then the threshold value, you probably want around four or five. And that's to help you make sure you're not sharpening the areas of small difference. So you're not amplifying the noise in that process. So usually 150, or excuse me, usually a halo of one and a half, an amount of 150, and a threshold of four or five is a good starting point. And then adjust that amount up or down based on your taste. All right, now let's talk about high pass sharpening. I'm going to flip over and pick high pass. High pass is a different algorithm for sharpening, and it's really designed for photos that were shot out of focus to start with. I'm going to do that same thing we did a minute ago. I'm going to change my blending mode over to difference so we can see how it works. I'm going to turn my amount all the way up to 100, and now I'll just change that halo. You notice how this is a much softer, more feathered mask. It's really taking, it's really looking at the largest edges in the photo, the biggest details. Again, this is why it works great on an out of focus photo. What you're really trying to do is take those largest contrasty edges and make them have more contrast. So it visually looks more sharp because you can't bring back the things that are totally out of focus, but you can make the overall image look a little bit better using this high pass sharpening. It's also not a bad way to add a little bit of local contrast 
in some of those areas, you will notice that it also will shift the color quite a bit on those edges. So you have to use it judiciously. Let's go back and switch to normal again. And now we'll adjust this back and forth. So I'll bring the amount up or down so you can see how that is just the overall amount. It's actually really the opacity of this effect being applied. And then the high pass filter controls the radius or the halo of the high pass, what we call the kernel size, or how big of an edge it's looking for to amplify. So again, high pass is good for sharpening a photo that was originally out of focus. Now the last one I want to show you is my favorite and the one that I use the most, and that's actually progressive sharpening. Progressive kind of takes the best of both of those worlds and puts them together. Progressive combines multiple iterative uh, sharpening techniques together, which allows you to sharpen the tiniest details separately from the larger details. And it also only affects the luminosity in the photo. So it doesn't uh, create any color changes and it also doesn't create any halos. When we look at progressive indifference, you'll see it's a very different look. We have to turn it up pretty high to actually see a difference here. I'm going to turn my amount all the way up. Let's zoom into a hundred percent and I'll bring my detail slider up. So you can see it's really just those small details that become very crisp. You notice there's no color in the difference because we're only affecting the luminosity. So we don't get any strange color things happening. It's really the cleanest, most natural looking sharpening that you can get. I'm going to go back to normal so you can take a look at this. Typically when I use progressive sharpening, I'm going to use it in the 50 to 75 range. And I'm going to use a threshold of around four. And then with the detail slider, this really lets you shift the balance of the sharpening from small details to the larger details. So when I have it further to the left, we're focusing more on the large details. As I move it to the right, we're focusing more on the small details. So you just kind of dial in the setting that you want. There we go. So great. Does a beautiful job of sharpening your photo. Doesn't give you those edge artifacts and lets you dial in just the right balance between small and medium details. Let me show you before and after here. So there's before, that's the original photo. And then after that progressive sharpening, let's go back to fit view and do the same thing. There's before and there's after. Now a couple things to keep in mind when you sharpen. At the bottom of the sharpening pane, there are protection sliders built in. So you can pull the sharpening off of things like the shadows or the highlights or skin. Pulling it off the shadows can be handy on a noisy photo. It'll help you from amplifying the shadow noise. Highlights is kind of the opposite. If you have scanned negative film, you want to reduce the sharpening in the highlights to reduce grain in the highlights. And then of course, skin, if you're working on a portrait, you tend not to want to sharpen the skin. Using the skin slider will help you pull the sharpening off those skin color ranges. Super handy. Now in terms of when to sharpen, it depends on the kind of sharpening you're looking at. There's really two kinds of sharpening. One is a visual effect sharpening, which is what we're looking at here inside of effects by using that progressive sharpening. We're trying to make the photo visually look sharper. The second kind of sharpening is output sharpening. That's what you do when you're going to print it. And that sharpening is designed to compensate for softness that's going to be caused by the printer. The best place to do that is inside a resize. So I'm just going to click on resize. We'll take our photo over there. The amount of output sharpening that you apply is dependent upon the size of the print you're making, the amount of increase in size that you're going up, and then the type of paper that you're printing on. That's why doing it in resize is the perfect place because there's built-in algorithms to adjust the amount of output sharpening depending on what you do. So for example, if I'm going to print on my Epson printer on resin coated paper and I'm going to blow this photo up to a 16 by 20, the amount of sharpening that it picks and the selections that it makes here in the sharpening pane will be different on a resin coated paper at this size rather than a matte paper at this size. It automatically calculates the optimal amount of sharpening for your printer paper and scaling operation. All right, so there you go. Kind of a deep dive in how the sharpening works in on one photo and when and how to use it. Thanks for watching.